Hello, my name is James Graney, and presenting with me is Andrew Hess. Today we'll be talking about cutting tools and their material properties and requirements. Cutting tools are used in a variety of applications to cut just about every material you can imagine. Today we'll focus on metal cutting tools and high-speed steel in particular. This is a bit made of high-speed steel called an end mill. It'll last for many years if it's used right, but if the bit was made of standard mild steel, it wouldn't last very long. What makes this high-speed steel so durable? First off, the cutting tool needs to be harder than the material we're cutting. It's got to be able to withstand the heat the cutting produces, and it can't wear out too fast. No cutting tools will have all of these properties. There will be compromises made between them depending on the material used, which depends on the application it's being used in. Cost is also a factor to be considered. High-speed steel has a very high alloy content compared to mild steel. M2 is the most popular type given its balance of strength and durability, so that's what we'll focus on. There's a wide variety of alloys within M2 high-speed steel, most of which are represented on this slide. The main alloying element used in high-speed steel is first on the list, um, is either tungsten or molybdenum. Given that tungsten is rarer than molybdenum, molybdenum usually replaces a large amount of tungsten. Both of these elements are used to create double carbides within the steel. Another alloy el element used is chromium, which allows for more hardenability and better heat treatment. Vanadium is another alloy in M2 high-speed steel, reduces slag and increases cutting efficiency. And of course, since we're dealing with the steel, we have carbon. The amount of carbon alloyed within high-speed steel creates a balance between hardness and wear resistance. Much like the requirements are changing for cutting tools and the, ma the materials used to alloy for high-speed steels also change. M2 has the microstructure of tempered martensite. The alloys slow the formation rate of perlite and bainite and tempered martensite consists of the equilibrium ferrite and cementite phases. So how is high-speed steel made? Well, a steel with the correct alloy is put through a series of heat treatments in order to form the microstructure. Preheating is done in two cycles and is used to reduce the thermal shock that is seen when entering the hardening phase or austenitizing phase. This phase forms austenite by dissolving the alloy carbides, which don't readily dissolve until 50 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit of their melting point. After being held at that temperature for several minutes, the steel is quenched in a molten salt bath for a short time, then it's cooled to ambient temperature. The quenching converts austenite into a hard martensite structure. The martensite is very hard but very brittle, so it's then tempered several times to relieve internal stresses that could cause cracking. This makes for a steel with a hardness similar to martensite but with more ductility. So now that we have a good strong steel to work with, let's see what we can do to improve the surface of the cutting tool. A bright finish or polishing of the cutting tool surface prevents the buildup of non-ferrous materials like aluminum. A black oxide finish prevents the buildup of ferrous materials like cast iron, and that's made by oxidizing the tool surface in a steam bath at 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. A nitride finish improves wear resistance, but it's going to reduce the toughness of the tool somewhat. That's achieved through introducing the tool to a nitrogen-rich environment at a temperature of around 1,000 degrees. A titanium nitride coating reduces the surface friction by up to a third, which increases the life of the tool by up to 400%. This is done by physically depositing vapor onto the surface of the steel. The properties, alloys, Processing and surface finish of high-speed steels come together to make a steel well-suited for the job of a cutting tool. To make these cutting tools actually feasible, we have to form them into their final state. High-speed steel is formed into its final state of a cutting tool by first extruding it into cylinders. Then these cylinders are cut and lathed to size to fit an end mill blank suitable for uses in various sizes. Then the cutting edges are lathed onto the cutting tool. This cutting tool is sharpened and measured for accuracy. And then this cutting tool is sent to the customer, where it can be found in a machine shop or a 
do-it-yourselfer's house or anything like that. And this concludes our presentation about cutting tools and their material properties. Thank you for listening.